in the Parkland neighborhood. We're going to be welcomed by our councilwoman here in a second. I just wanted to say a, a few things. It's really a great honor to have the National League of Cities and Policy Link representatives here today to continue their assistance here in the city and continue offering us a national perspective on efforts that we're making to improve the next generation of leaders in our city, particularly young men and boys of color. Uh, when you think about our administration and what we've been focusing on for the last three and a, three and a half years, I speak every day uh, about the importance of a healthier community, a more compassionate community, and certainly a community that's uh, addicted to lifelong learning. And the outcome of all this is a city where the potential of everybody flourishes and comes alive every day. Now, when you take a look at a city, then we've got to break it down by demographics to see where our opportunities, where our challenges are, and certainly we have a common thread in that, and it's a linchpin for success, and that's with education. And then we, we take a look at the stats and achievements of all of our different populations. We see that our boys and young men of color are challenged when it comes to achievement relative to education. Uh, in the most recent 55K re report, we saw some of the numbers uh, that were out. Good news for the community as whole, 42% uh, of our 41.2% our of Louisvillians have a college degree, they're two or four year degrees. The national average is 39%, so we're ahead of the nation there. 42% of the majority population or ca Caucasians have a college degree, and that is about twice the rate of people of color. Our Hispanic population is around 19%. We're na we are narrowing the gap on college readiness when, when our citizens of color are concerned from 25% to 33%. So that's progress, but that's not nearly enough to have the type of community and have the potential of all of our citizens flourishing at the same time. When you look at education and employment and jobs, poverty, health, crime, they're all tied together. The higher the educations, the higher the quality of life. When you take a look at future employability, obviously the education has to be there. When you take a look at our crime stats, you see the correlation between low education and crime at the same time. And when you take a look within our crime, what I call the system of crime, too often uh, young men and boys of color are involved with crime in our city. We know that about two-thirds of the homicides that take place in Louisville have a young African-American man or boy on one side of the gun and a victim on the other side. More often than not, they know each other. More often than not, they're high school dropouts with learning differences, significant challenges in their life, and more often than not, they know each other. And this is happening all over the country. If today is an average day in America, there will be 12 African-American young men or boys that are the victims of homicide. If we face these type of losses with our military or other citizens, the country would be in a total uproar. We have obviously not just an economic responsibility, but a moral responsibility to change the factors where we lose the potential of our people, whether it be to violence, whether it be to health, whether it be to education. This simply is not acceptable for our city or any city and certainly for our country as well. And we've got to tell the whole story about our young men and boys of color at the same time. Lots of success stories that we don't hear enough about. Thousands, tens of thousands, millions of young black men going to college around the country, being successful, being executives in our corporations, in our nonprofits, community leaders. But we also got to be looking at disparities between the majority and minority populations and do the hard work and the investments that we need to have to change the play playing field so everybody feels like they have the social mobility and potential to move forward as Americans. There's not one magic thing that we can do to solve these problems, just that, like there hasn't been one thing that's led to success for us in our community. But fundamentally, it's about having hope if you work hard and you play by the rules. If you do that, you need to get a fair shot. It's about having a mentor to encourage you when you have a low moment and you may not know the way forward. You need somebody there that's been there before. It's about being exposed to opportunities and experiences that advantage kids get every day that will broaden your outlook on what the world could be for you. 
It's about having a safe place to go if you live in a troubled neighborhood, so you can go there to avoid temptation and negative reinforcement. And it's about having a community that cares enough to show up and read to you at school, give you some advice on the basics of life, could be teaching you how to shake a hand, looking at somebody in the eye during a job interview, helping you get that college degree. Now the good news is that all these things are doable if we mobilize further as a community. Everything I just touched upon we're doing here in Louisville, but we need to do more of it. We're on a journey as a city. There's over 10 programs that are targeted in this area. You, you hear us talk about them all the time. 15K, Cities United, our, summer's work, our Summer Works Initiative that started at zero three years ago, and just this past summer we had 2,000 jobs, summer jobs for teens in our community. Our Cities United work, the Gentlemen's Academy, which just graduated its most recent class. Safe and Healthy Neighborhood Programs. The LEAP program within JCPS has fantastic results. Youth Build is doing wonderful things. Our restorative justice increases. Trying to expunge a felony so all citizens can have the right to vote once they've paid their dues. Our Right Turn Grant, our Metro Mentors. We go on and on. So we are pleased uh, that we're doing good work here, and we're pleased now that we're working with the National League of Cities and Policy Link. That's the purpose for this press conference today, to talk about the work that we're doing with them and our national cohort of other cities with National League of Cities, 11 other cities that are doing work like this that we are taking advantage of so that we can learn what's working in other communities so we can accelerate progress in our city. Our team is exposed to them. Anthony Smith is our great leader for safe and healthy neighborhoods. Judge Sadiqa Reynolds is our chief of community building. So in closing, I just want to say, I, I like to focus on action. Oftentimes in this work, you see people flapping their lips a lot. To me, is I don't want to see the lips, I want to see action. Yes, we have programs, but we got to do them at the same time. I just ran through the city's commitment to our programs. I call on all citizens, please, ask yourself, how can I help? How can I be a mentor? How can I help somebody get that college degree? It may not be your degree, but maybe you're babysitting their kid while they're out there finishing their college hours. But everybody can do something, and this is everybody's responsibility and certainly a pathway to potential for our city. So please stand up and please help.